Thank you. Today I'm going to talk about eco terms. As you all know, eco terms are international terms that are used to do business in the international markets. So eco terms is a is a term which has three letters. That is eco eco terms. So these three letters were developed by the International Chamber of Commerce and widely used in the international and domestic contracts for the sale of goods. They are accepted by governments and shippers worldwide and are used to prevent uncertainties or misunderstanding. So these eco terms are terms that are used to be able to reduce uncertainties and misunderstanding in the, in the global arena. So eco terms specify the right and obligation of the parties that enter into a contract for the delivery of goods sold. Then we have 11 terms that specify how transaction costs and responsibilities are divided between the buyer and seller. So when we talk about eco terms, what must come into our, your mind is the, the parties involved when it comes to eco terms. So the companies are the buyers and we are the sellers. So those, that, is, that is what is going to create the focus of this lesson. So we have terms for any transport mode. So if you want to use any transport mode in the international market, these are some of the terms that we are going to interact with in the global arena. So we have those terms that are used for any transportation mode. So if you want to do business and you want to transport your goods from one specific port of destination to another, so basically these are the terms that will guide you. The first term is the carriage and insurance paid. This term, basically, the seller pays for moving of goods to the destination from the time the goods are transferred to the carrier and the buyer bears the risk of loss or damages but the seller pays for the cargo insurance. So basically when you're transporting your goods to the international market, the first term that will guide you is the carriage and insurance paid. So as I told you earlier, <coughs> we have two parties that are involved. We have the seller and we have the buyer. So in this carriage uh, and insurance paid, the person who bears all the risk is the, is the buyer. But on the part of the insurance, the seller is the one who pays the insurance for the cargo. The second uh, type of term is called the carriage to pay, also referred to as the CPT. The seller pays for the moving goods to the destination from the time the goods are transferred to the first carrier and the buyer bears the risk of loss of the damage. So basically what happens in this type of term, the person who is involved in payment of the goods in transit is the seller until the goods reach the, the destination from the time the goods are transferred to the first carrier. So the seller bears the risk up to the time the goods are transferred to the first carrier and the buyer bears the rest of the risk and the loss of the goods. The, the other one is delivered at place, also called a DAP. In this type of term, the delivery takes place when the seller places the goods at the buyer's disposal on the arrival means of transport. And when the goods are therefore ready to be unloaded at the named place of destination, so in this type of term, the seller places the goods at the buyer's disposal in the arrival means of transport. We also, it is best, it is the best, it's best to be as specific as possible about the exact point within the place of destination because that, uh, that's the point where the risk transfer from the seller to the buyer. So upon, upon the goods reaching the destination, that is the point the goods are transferred from the, the buyer to the, the seller. The other type of uh, term is the delivered at terminal. In this type of uh, term, the seller delivers the goods when they have been unloaded from the arriving means of transport and placed at the disposal of the buyer and the name terminal and the named port of the place of destination. So the seller is supposed to provide the information 
on the named port or the place of destination. This includes the terminals, which are the warehouses, the quays, the container yards, or the road, rail, or air cargo terminal. The seller and the buyer should agree to the specific terminal when possible and the point within the terminal at which the risk will be transferred from the seller to the buyer. The other one is the delivered duty pay, also called the DP, the DDP. The seller delivers the goods which have been cleared for inputs to the buyer at destination. The seller bears all the costs and the risks of moving the goods from the destination, including payments of the customs duty and taxes. We also have the XOX, also called the EXW. <coughs> the seller only is responsible to make the goods available at the seller's premises. The buyer bears the full cost and the risk of moving the goods from there to the destination. So in this type of term, the buyer bears all the risks from moving the goods from the seller's premises to the destination where the goods are supposed to go. XW means that the seller has the goods ready for collection at his premises or factory on the date agreed upon. This term places the greatest responsibility of the buyer and minimum obligation on the seller. <coughs> the other one is free carrier. The seller delivers the goods that have been cleared for export to the carrier selected by the buyer. So in this type of uh, term, it is the buyer who selects the carrier. And the carrier is supposed to ensure the goods are able to reach the destination. The seller loads the goods if the carrier picks at the carrier's pickup location is on the seller's premises. That is the truck from the point the buyer bears the cost and the risk of moving the goods to the destination. This is the freight collection term that should be used by the sea shipment in containers, whether less than container load or the full container load. The other type of terms that we are going to use or to talk about today are the marine time only terms. And the first term is called the cost and freight terms. Under the cost and freight terms is that the seller clears the goods for export and pays the cost and freight to the main port of destination. The buyer bears the risk of loss or damages. So therefore in this type of term is that the buyer bears the risk of the loss or damages of the goods in transit. The other type of uh, term is the cost insurance and freight. In this term, the seller clears the goods for exports and pays the cost cargo insurance and freight to the named port of destination. The buyer bears the risk of loss or damages. <coughs> the other thing is the first along ship, named, also the named loading port. The seller delivers the goods to the named port of shipment. From that point, the buyer bears all the risks of loss or damage. This term is only used to maritime transport, but it's only used, it is not used for multimodal sea transport in containers. It is typically used for heavy lift or bulk cargo. We also have the free on board named loading port. In this time, the seller delivers the goods on board the ship and clears the goods for export. From that point, the buyer bears all the cost and the risk of loss or damages. So the other thing that we are going to talk about today is the commodity, commodity market. What is a commodity market? As the name suggests, a commodity, a commodity is an item. or a product. So commodity market basically is a market that takes trade in primary economic sector rather than manufacturing products like cocoa, fruit and sugar. We have two types of commodities. We have hard commodities and hard commodities are items that are mined such as gold and 
oil. Investors access about 50 major commodity markets worldwide with purely financial transaction, increasingly outnumbering the fiscal trade which goods are delivered. So the issues to be considered in commodity markets include the taste and preference of consumers. So basically we have different consumers have different tastes. Therefore in commodity markets we also we always consider the taste and preference of the consumers. We also consider the income of people. Remember when people have an income they are able to buy the items and, and, and like when you don't have income. So income of, of people basically is dependent and you realize income when you have income you are able to, to spend. The other important issue is the change in price and related goods. So you realize when price changes people tend to to when the price increases people tend not to buy a particular product unlike when the prices are down. We also have advertisement advertisement expenditure. You realize when companies advertise more they're able to get <coughs> they're able to get uh, more sales. This is because customers are able to know what they they are selling. We also have the number of consumers in the market. If the number of consumers in the market is high, then it means the market demand is also high and customers are able to, to buy different items in the market. The, the greater the number of consumers, the greater the market demand for it. The other one is the consumer expectation with regard to to future price. When consumers realize that the prices are going to increase in future, then at the end of the day, they will buy more today so that they can safeguard when the future prices increase. But when the future prices are going to be down, consumers tend not to buy now, they tend to, to buy in the future. Basically, you need to realize that commodity market is very common and companies want to capitalize in the commodity markets and the strength of customers purchasing power so thank you for listening let's meet next time same place same time thank you